and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the return of Mono Red Aggro. This time we're playing it in best of three and we have a different deck list from what we were playing yesterday. We have a, a new uh, donator that also wants to see Mono Red, but wants to see it in best of three and with a little bit of a different list. And so that's what we're going to be doing here today. Uh, so taking a look at our deck here, you may notice Noah Torbran. And I thought that was pretty interesting. Instead, we're playing this Emberith Paladin. Four mana, four one haste. But with us, since we're mono red, it's really going to be a five two haste. So we have, um, you know, that's a pretty powerful creature. Five damage on an empty battlefield. That's a lot of damage for four mana. So we got uh, this creature. But as you can see, we're just really creature focused in general. We're not playing nearly as many burn spells. Shock. And then I guess Stomp. You can count that. But that's a creature. That's really it. Um, we have... Eight, eight one drops, eight two drops. Of course, the Bone Crusher. Then we're also Legion War Boss, which can help us go wide uh, by making or creating, I guess, creating a Goblin token every single turn. So with us being creature uh, focused with this red deck, we do get to have Ember Cleave at the top end. So this is going to be our our top end card to put on these attacking creatures. An Embereth Paladin that's a 5-2, put an Ember Cleave on it. That's a 6-3 Double Strike Trample. That's a whole lot of damage. We'll see if we ever get to pull that off. But um, that's that's kind of what our deck's all about. Just playing these creatures. Uh, sorry, playing these creatures and attacking. And not going so much burn style. This is much more creature-heavy aggro. Um, Sideboard-wise, we have a little bit of our removal over there. You can see over here we got four Lava Coils. So we're playing against other creature matchups. We got those to be able to bring in. We have a couple of Fries whenever those need to be sideboarded in. And then against the uh, Witches Oven decks, we're going with Emberth Shield Breakers. They can just destroy the artifact and get the 2-1. Um, I'm not sure if this is better if just straight up destroying the artifact, if that's going to be better than Immolation Shaman. That's a card that we talked about with the other mono red before. I, I'd be pretty excited about trying Immolation Shaman in the sideboard. But this list that, that I had donated has the Embereth Shield Breaker instead. Uh, Tybalt's uh, keep people from gaining life, which maybe this is pretty good against Cauldron Familiar decks also. Like They have a ton of food, and so maybe you want to go Tybalt against those decks also. Keep Cauldron Familiar and all the foods from gaining life. And then, of course, Experimental Frenzies, which I think this is a, a good call, just having four Frenzies in the sideboard. Um, because a lot of the games for Mono Red in games two and three go a lot longer. People board in all of their anti Mono Red stuff so that they're bringing in all their anti aggro, you know, lots of uh, cheap removal and good blockers and things like that. You need to be able to play a long game. And so there we get to turn to the four experimental frenzies after sideboard. So let's see how it works out. We're going to be playing a league here. We're playing until we either win five or lose two, whatever happens first. We'll see how we do. Hey, EC. Hello. All right, the cat's eating his lunch. He sounds real happy. Mountain. Get a mono red mirror right away. Yep, sure looks like it. Laying fire on the three one. Uh, that hurts because that that allows them to play the Bone Crusher Giant. Also, I didn't expect them to have shock in hand because they used the slaying fire on the three one uh, last turn. Um, I think I'm supposed to just take four here. Yeah, 
and get that thing out of here. Hey, Nuga Gris. Yeah, a little less impressive than uh, Torbrand in this matchup. It's pretty easy to kill a 5-2. Um, yeah, you know, like, they could even block with these things within Shock, Bone Crusher, Giants. Very easy to kill a 5-2. Seven Dwarves. Dwarven Vine's pretty nice. Yeah, this game's over. All right, so we're definitely boarding out the Emberth Paladins. Uh, I'm going to be boarding in the Frenzies. This is this is the kind of matchup that you want to just like this mirror. You want to be able to basically outgrind the other person. This is actually the mono red mirror is actually very grindy. My opponent is doing that by having the light of the stages, and they've gone through another four cards of their library than what I have. You actually want a lot of removal and you actually want a lot of removal. This Rimrock Knight doesn't block, does it? Removal and card advantage. So unfortunately, we're like the Rimrock Knight and the Emberth Paladin. These these are just going to go. These are the two worst cards in our deck. And we've drawn multiple of both. Unfortunately. Yeah, so we'll be bringing in the lava coils. So we want so these are gone, these are gone. So it's not the matchup for those. So that those can just be replaced by coils and frenzies. Um, I don't hate Tybalt. Like Tybalt's not bad because it can it can make multiple bodies that you know it can make multiple bodies that can trade with multiple cards. I think we're gonna take out a couple Ember Cleaves for a couple Tybalts. Hmm. Wish I had like one other thing to play instead of this other Ember Cleave, but I guess we'll just leave a one of Ember Cleave in here. If the Embercleave was just anything else, I would I would honestly keep five lands frenzy and then any spell that's not frenzy or embercleave, you know, like if it was just any other spell in the deck. I'd be happy with that. But this is this is just a six card hand that's five lands and a frenzy. Which isn't bad. Hitting land drops is valuable. And frenzy can be a lot of spells over some turns. We have to survive. We had to play something turns one, two, and three to help survive, which is the problem with this Ember Cleave. Man, that's just the worst card to see. I 
can keep it. The thing about mulliganing is that there's there's just a pretty reasonable chance that we're not going to have too good of a hand or that we're going to get outvalued if we mulligan. <clears throat> the deck only has 21 lands, so we're looking at only 16 more here. And so I think it's a pretty high percentage chance that we're going to be drawing stuff to play turn two and three. And like I said, this this game, this matchup really is a grindy matchup. It really is about grinding. The other thing about the other thing though that's that's not so bad about having a hand that's really bad when you have frenzy is because frenzy doesn't let you play your hand anyway. So if your hand if your hand sucks, it doesn't matter. So like it, it's okay that we have all of these crappy lands because we don't can't can't play our cards anyway. All right, Bone Crusher Giant, pretty valuable. Um, I think I'll draw the shock. Cool, good call. Land, perfect. We want to. You always want to keep hitting land drops every turn with frenzy. So that was just a that was a very good quality turn for us. But yeah, you can see our opponents just sitting on it. Probably, you know, they got a bunch of burn spells over there waiting for us to play threats. So that worked out well, hitting, especially hitting that other land drop. These dwarven mines have looked good, honestly. Hoping this is a land underneath the steamkin. Well. Darn. My symphony of hate. Oh, they're so cute. Because the more lands we have, the more cards we get to play every turn. Seen how how good Bone Crusher Giant is because it's always a two for one, and the second part being that four three is pretty is a pretty difficult card to deal with. Ugh, there's the two lands in a row underneath. If just the the spitter and the land were in the other place, we could have played land and then spitter last turn. Meteor Golem. Wow. Speaking of a really great two for one. Yeah, Meteor Chupacabra. Oh, I guess I guess I could have shocked that first, but I was I was kind of focused on killing this Bone Crusher Giant. This is gonna be attacking me. Seven mana. So if I pop 
If I pop Frenzy, I'll have four mana left. Um, I can basically do all this stuff in my hand. Attacking there with the Steamkin as a 4-4. Four, four. But still, you can see how good that, that Frenzy was for us. We got so many cards. Just trade. We'll be able to pull ahead again. We're back to having those same four first cards that we had whenever we <laughs> got rid of the frenzy in the first place. Of course, I'm not. I'm not gonna play a land from hand because we can play a land from the top of the library, Something like that. Uh, wait. What was that attack about? What are you, what are you doing over here? Do you not see I have a castle? Ah, they just didn't want their creature lava coiled. Makes sense. A lot of haste creatures. Just don't need to attack here. Yeah, that one's got me not, not to block. Almost. And we finally dealt a point of damage. We don't have that many more lands left in the deck, right? 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. There's only three lands left out of the 20 cards. We're probably going to hit a lot of spells here. So I think there's only one land left after this one. Yeah, when you hover over the sleeve... We'll have to do it after, like, the next game. I'll show you the next game whenever we're not frenzying. <laughs> How the turn at tables. Okay. Well, um, guess we do it the same. I let's play a shield break over this Ember Cleave. I don't, I don't really care about this Ember Cleave. Let's play a, a two mana two one. Uh, let's see if I. 
So the, the problem with having a whole bunch of spells before Frenzy is that you want to play all your spells in your hand. That was kind of the good part about our last hand. We just had a whole bunch of lands. We just threw down Frenzy on turn four. We had all the bad stuff in our hand. Oh no. That's not great. Witcom, BVB, with the Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there, Witcom. Our third wonderful sub of the day. Yeah, I, I kind of wish I would have bought the My Lo Little Pony sleeves too. They're like the only sleeves I didn't buy, and like that I haven't that I haven't acquired. I kind of regret that too. All right, well, that frenzy's gone for good. Steam can. Traitor Steam can. Um. Hmm. Foyons. I'll go with that. Foyons with a Twitch Prime sub. Hopefully that's pronounced correctly. Thank you so much. All right, so I think I have to kill the Rob or the Rich. They don't get more cards. But then, of course, the Steamkin can get a lot larger. I just hope it doesn't. Um, but I, I have the Coil. I hope they can't just like play three spells and then use Steamkin to play more spells, though. But at least they only have four spells in hand. That's good. If we draw a land, I'll probably just go Steamkin Shock. Well, now they have this. Now this is going to be bigger. So yeah, I'll be coiling that now. It's a lot of spells over there, and they got the mana to play them. That was the thing. I had the mana last turn. Last game, sorry. I, I could definitely see this deck playing a 20-second land in the in the, in the the uh, sideboard for whenever you bring in the Frenzies. Bring in a 20-second land. That could be like that. You know, I have the the one extra 2-1 creature that I, that I don't love, but it's in here. I could see that being a 20-second land. Killing that thing now. I don't know, maybe I should have killed it last turn. Yeah, for the Embercleave replacement there. Quite good, but did open up the land for us. Unfortunately, land isn't isn't anything special now. Hmm. Playing a bone crusher play uses my mana the best. But it could be difficult if they if they have removal for bone crusher and then get to attack for eight. Freely. The safest play is just coil a dwarf. I 
Yeah, we did see a ton of draws with no lands there, for sure, with, you know, casting the light at the stage and everything, too. Probably just going to be the difference in this game. And at least no Ember Cleave, that's good. Well, they just have some lands over here. Risk factor. Uh, ouch. And this is why I kept the, the game two hand. I liked just having a lot of lands in the frenzy. Need to be able to play a lot of Shivan Fire. Need to be able to play a lot of cards. For Shivan Dragon. Why, why did they just play that thing? I was just like dead. Well, I'm happy how I played that one. It didn't work out for us, but I think I played it well. But our our list isn't isn't too well suited for the mono red mirror. Yeah, I don't. I don't like that we have twenty one lands. Honestly, I I just don't like that. At least at least post board whenever we have frenzy. I can understand that game one. I think I think there should be a land in the sideboard. We're on the tournament grounds. You may be on this tournament grounds, but I'm up here chilling on this mountain. I was wondering whenever I was doing that, I was wondering if that's a bad light at the stage, if I should just, just play the Fervent Champion since I already played my land drop. And then, yeah, because we can't play both of these things next this next turn. It's not like I needed to search for land drops. I'm just... The Steamkin's just running away now. hand must not be very good at all. I didn't, I didn't go cleave. Don't really need to show him cleave. Show him war boss we already had played. So 
this is basically a mono red matchup, even though they're not mono red, but it's the same kind of thing. Small creature deck. I think that our game plan is the same. Yeah, I wish this shield breaker was a, another land. I could play Fry. They're probably going to have white creatures, considering they're playing tournament grounds, but maybe not. Maybe they're just... Maybe they're just Rakdos that's just playing that for... I guess we only saw Rakdos stuff. Yeah, and they probably have Cleave, and Shieldbreaker can break a Cleave. So maybe I should bring in more Shield Breakers. Oh, you think they had a Goblet Shrine over there? Yeah. That could... Yeah, so that would represent. Come on. There you go. That would represent white cards. That was a good draw. Asgiria, what's up? Yeah, it did, Big G. Yeah, the the mill deck did feel better than playing Demir Control because it felt easier to attack their library and remove the 60 cards from their library instead of trying to do the 20 damage. I mean, I, looking like what we have over here, what they have over here, I like our chances in a longer game. I think I just don't want to really get... Huh. Why would you not just activate the Knight of the Oven Legion and then get a counter on it, I guess? I guess they didn't want to do that. <laughs> no, that's that's how it happens, Choco. Yo, Choco asks, why is why is it that whenever I tech in a Kaya to counter the cat decks, I never face cat decks? Whoa, level a hundred. Check out the sweet sleeve. We gotta use the sleeve here soon. We did a very good job of hitting our land drops that game, or that match. That was a big reason why we won. Did a very good job of hitting land drops. <laughs> Your sleeve is now a 3-3 elk.
This is the lightning bolt one. Can't bolt Chandra. This sleeve is exquisite. Power. Okay, you're level ninety three. Yeah, you're right there. That's rough when your removal spell is Assassin's Trophy. In case of Sweeper, I guess I'd rather have Scorch Spitter out here. This allows me to have Bone Crusher Giant or Shock available as well. Our Cerebus was pumped. Our Cerebus was pumped. All right, well, we didn't see a ton. You know, all we saw was a trophy and a Wicked Wolf. They're Abzan, though, so it definitely means Tulsimer, which kind of makes me want to play Tybalt. They're definitely playing Tulsimer. Are these five twos even going to be able to get in? It's possible they aren't. Gonna keep keep a number cleave. <laughs> the equip joining the creature to attack was cool. That was pretty cool. This castle Embrith land looks sweet too. Why no yeah, I didn't I didn't put together the, the specific list that we're playing. This is a donation deck. All these decks here today are actually donation decks. They're actually built by other people. Um let me use my mana. Uh, so I I could Fervent Champion plus Shock. Um anyway, it's somebody asks, is it true that 
mono red's the fastest farm. Um, yes, but it's not it's not the best decks. So you're not gonna have the highest win percentage with it. Yeah, we'll have quicker games. The old save runaway steamkin for your last card in hand. Trick. No wicked wolf, that's good. Not Legion's End, that's good. This giant just hits a lot harder, and with like Wicked Wolf, Tulsimer, a little worried about that Steam Can. Does that Goose animation look, make it look like the Goose has an attitude? That's what it looks like to me. GWA, Goose with Attitude. Oh, it looks like a Goose with Attitude. Alright, there's the first wolf. Land would be nice, just be able to land shock frenzy. That'd be cool. Huh. Wonder if they have more Knight of Autumns. Well, that's still not a. I mean, that's still two two cards that kill frenzy. They're not killing my frenzy. So that's good. Well then. This has all just worked out really well for me. Because I, I think this is... For all these cards that my opponent's playing, this feels like this would be a real tough matchup for Mono Red. In general. Like, <laughs> these are all really problematic cards. These. You know, Knight of Autumn's trophies. Ambush. Wicked Wolf. These are good anti-aggro cards.
No, trophies of a just fine anti aggro card. Because it costs, you know, it's a removal spell that costs two mana. As long as we win, nothing else matters. Helps you, helps you stay alive. I'll just kill this thing. Because basically, if I if I attack them, I could do a whole lot of damage to them, but then the Golgari Queen could kill my Bone Crusher Giant. Believe in the cleave. Why didn't they kill the giant? I guess because like that would have killed their Golgari queen also. Um, but yeah, then by not killing, I got to equip and everything. Um, but that would have like their Golgari queen was at three, and so they were scared of losing their Golgari. You know, they didn't want to trade Golgari queen for Bone Crusher, I suppose. This was a frenzy I'd keep. So what is this? 16 out of 53 laughter lands. What's the math on that? It's about one third, right? Maybe a little less than one third. 30 percent. So we have a 30% chance of drawing a land. So 70% of our draws would be non-lands. So you know, basically if we go if we go two spells, then it, we draw two spells, then draw a land, then draw two spells, then draw a land. That's okay. This card's really powerful. <clears throat> Mono red is the type of deck that doesn't mulligan well. Like this is not a card, this is not a deck that like goes to six very well. When you only have 21 lands, you go to six and you just have like a one lander, and then you just go to five and you know, this is This is definitely a, like mono red's the type of deck that's a resource deck that you, you need all these resources fast. See? We got draw steps to fill in the fill in the curve. Abs again. What are we shocking? Yeah, and Keeper is pretty nasty. I 
and Corso is Bronted on. Bronted on destroying my Ember Cleave over there. The problem with equipping Embercleave to run away Steamkin is Giant Killer. I kind of feel like my opponent is just chilling with another Giant Killer. They want me to equip. That's one. Two, it could just be Murderous Rider. If it's Murderous Rider, there's no reason to spend the mana to equip anyway. So now we just get to free up this turn. If I would have Rimrocked the Spitter first and then Steamkin, you would have had enough mana for Embercleave. Yeah, if, I guess, yeah, if I would have just, just main phase. Yeah, if I would have just main phased plus two on the spitter and then just play Rimrock, then yes, I would have, then, then yeah, then I would have still had enough for Ember Cleave, and that probably would have been the better play. Um, this is Boxer by the, the Gaslight Anthem. Panavia, thanks for resubbing with Twitch Prime. I appreciate that. Oh, why didn't I wait a turn to attack? It's our fifth sub of the day. So we've only drawn we've only drawn 50% spells. When we had when I said we had 70% of our deck was spells, 30% land. We've drawn we've drawn three lands, three spells. Really need you know, four spells, two lands. At least, you know, be to at least be a sixty six percent. Now four lands, three spells. We do not have that many lands left in our deck. Basically just doing the same thing, like these just don't really care for these cards. Um Embercleave's good against the little blockers. 
They do have Brontodon. Brontodon blows up Frenzy, though, also. I don't know if they're going to be playing, like, the Great Henge that I'd really want to destroy with a Shield Breaker. Or not. I hope not. Yeah, I hope they don't have Henge. Well, I don't. I don't have more good cards to bring in. So even if War Boss is kind of bad, I don't have other good cards to bring in. I think what I've just kind of learned from playing Mono Red the last couple of days is that Frenzy is the place to be. I think I just want to be for Frenzy main deck. I think I want to be 22 land for Frenzy in Mono Red right now. How does this deck ever beat Lovestruck Beast? I have to use Shock on half of their card. Like they didn't, they didn't even play their their three mana five five, and they already already had to use my shock, and now I can't even kill an innkeeper now. Which they obviously have. Pixel. Two, four. Seven. So basically, do I sacrifice War Boss to do seven damage to them, or I get I get one damage right now, or I can play you know Steamkin Fervent Champion, swing out. They block War Boss. I do seven. They go down to five. I don't think so. I think I want to get Tybalt in play, not let them gain life first. Hey, Cody Gmail with a Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much there, Cody. Another new Twitch Prime sub in here. Y'all are awesome. Our sixth wonderful sub of the day.
friend is here to help your pain. Uh, I didn't really re redo this, so this would be two, four, five, six damage right now. They missed a land drop. My my best draw is probably coil to take out Brontodon. It's unfortunate. Two, four, six. So it's still just six damage. But now I'm sacrificing three things to get six damage in here. They kill my war boss, Fervin Champion, and run away Steam Cannon, I deal six. Seven. It's seven damage. All right, seven's worth it. Seven puts him down to two, where we have a lot of two damage burn spells. And obviously we have these two Tybalt things that can do two damage whenever they die. So if they don't have life gain here, we they're dead next turn if they don't have life gain. Because they're at two, we have these two Tibble things. We attack with them, they have to block them. We just gotta hope they don't have life gain. Or they have legions end. Uh, how are we ever supposed to win? Jeez. All right, land shock. Oh, so close. So close. No, no life gain. No life gain. <laughs> Thine mask. No, don't gain. Don't. Don't pray for life gain. Don't do it. At least they didn't play Soren. Free combat. Better not just have Tulsimer. Yeah. I mean, they're playing three mana, two, three lifelinkers that draw two. Like, Divination's a pretty good card. Three mana draw two. Their three mana draw two is just attached to a two, three lifelinker. All right, well, we, we stole a game on the play. I think that there is no possible chance for us to win post-board here. 
just actual no chance. Could play Paladin instead of Cleave, because Paladin is a 5-2, so it can tussle with those 5 power things. Maybe we're supposed to do that instead of these war bosses that send 1-1s one -ones into the 2-3 lifelinkers. I mean, I think our best way of winning is playing a really long game with Frenzy. I think that's like our best way of winning. I don't think I don't think just the the aggro I don't think the aggro plan is gonna work. Basically. I think we have to outgrind them. Scorch Spitter doesn't do a great job of that, but it costs one mana. Basically, I don't think it attacking is, you know, like Rimrock Knight, yeah, it can pump over a big thing, but I don't think attacking is the most valuable thing. I think we have to try to outgrind Edgewell Innkeeper, which is very difficult. All right, well, we have our lands, which we have determined is very important, especially, especially with us... <clears throat> on the Frenzy plan. We've got to have lands for Frenzy. No, we just got to draw Frenzy now. We'll have light up on three to look for Frenzy. That's fine, getting the lands out of our... That's This is fine, because... As long as we find Frenzy, having these extra lands is just fine, because remember, we don't get to play any cards from our hand after we play Frenzy anyway. <laughs> yeah, we already got eight of the 21 lands. Why? I have Shock and Lava Coil that I can't do anything with that are just going to go away. And they just played Questing Beast and tapped their Paradise Druid and just let me kill their two things with these, these two cards. They're just going to go away. Just take two damage from Shock. Play the Questing Beast the next turn. What What are you doing over here? What are we doing over here? All right, we haven't found Frenzy. The whole, our entire plan rests on a card that we haven't found yet. We need to draw that card. Sooner is better than later. Sure. Good job, Scorch Bitter. Traded with a real spell. Good job. Not just. Not just half of a three mana five five. This devilishly fun. My assistants are painfully slow. All right, frenzy, any time now. I got plenty of mana. Nine of our twenty one lands are gone. Thank you. So do I play the land first? See, this gives me two mana. Yeah, I'm gonna play the land first. Obviously, Oketra is just going to wreck us. 
obviously. I adore an audience. You know, each one of these things bring along a 4-4. Four -four. This card already killed. It killed my four mana card. And is a 4-4 four -four and a 1-2. <laughs> for four mana. We dead. I like it though. Oketra is just a really underrated card. It's an underrated card. Opponent's deck looks pretty good. Cheap adventure creatures with Oketra. I like it. Why does Teferi ruin Oketra? Oh, they meant they meant Kefnet. Oh, okay. I think we could play this matchup a hundred times and win and win like two out of the hundred. <laughs> the the power level of the cards we're playing compared to the power level of the cards my opponents play is just is not not close. Those adventure cards are really good. All right, uh, two and two. Um, okay, so we went two and two. Like I said, I feel like for for mono red, I, I kind of feel like the best way to play mono red is a mono red control deck. Maybe that's because that plan works a lot better after sideboarding, when people are more hmm, when they're lower to the ground and more interactive and stuff. But maybe it's just the way to go in general. This Emberth Paladin did not look like a real magic card. This this looked like, or at least not a real card that you can play in, in standard. This was not. This wasn't, yeah. I would never play this card uh, again in this format. You know, maybe new formats, maybe something else changes, but. Uh, yeah. I think we'd have to just get rid of this, get. You know, frenzies and tour brands and burn spells. Maybe be able to go with some something like that. Um, you know, just try to just try to play late games with frenzies. I don't know. Maybe that's just my play style too, though. But it just the, just the the red aggro is just not strong enough with how good these creatures are. Um, so yeah, as far as like what that would look like, that'd probably just be like all the, like, I think I'd just not play Rimrock Knight, not play Warboss, not play Paladin, not play Embercleave, 
Like those 15 cards, I'm not really interested in playing. And get, you know, Frenzies, a couple Tor Brands, and then just a lot of removal spells. Um, that that kind of sounds like how I'd more I'd like Mono Red more. Um, but at that point, at that point, I don't know if just, if it's just even worth it playing Mono Red. To be honest, I've done similar stuff with, with Rakdos. Um, do I have a deck list still? This kind of, you know, basically this, this kind of strategy where you're just like removal spell, win late games with Frenzy kind of thing. Mono red, you get to be more aggressive. Um, and, you know, you actually have, like, some creatures that can do some more damage early on and stuff like that. But I, I, I just feel like, like, red doesn't have the... just the power to beat the green decks, basically. I think, you know, we, we found some success against other small creature decks, and I think you can be just fine there. But these green decks that are, all like, these adventure decks... This just doesn't have the power to get through them. Okay, well, there we go. That's So that's uh, Mono Red Aggro. Hope you all uh, learned stuff over there. And uh, over on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Leave some comments. You know, Let me know what you think of Mono Red and, and how you're playing Mono Red in best of three with success. Uh, what are you doing with Frenzy? What are you doing with Torbran? Um, all that kind of stuff. Are you playing Rimrock Knight, War Boss? What burn spells are you playing if you're playing burn spells? Leave those comments over on YouTube. Um, but that's it here for Mono Red Aggro, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.